It's that time of year, folks. Let me fix my hair just real briefly. There we go. I fixed the hair a bit. Uh, or maybe I didn't. Jeez. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. Uh, th hi, everyone. So, yeah. It's the worst movies of 2017. Obviously, this is my list. This is my personal opinion. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be some movies on this list that are going to piss you off that I put them on the list. Um, now, I'm not, I've am not. i got reviews for all these movies, so I'm not going to go in real in-depth. I'll try to spend maybe a minute or two talking about it, maybe a couple minutes. But I'll try to be as quick as possible. I want to keep this as at minimum or at best maybe 20 minutes. So let's just get into this. Number 10. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Now, this was a movie... This is not only one of the worst movies of the year. This is probably one of the most disappointing movies of the year. And I actually had to struggle a little bit to find some uh, movies to put on the list. Because I don't try to see bad movies, obviously. I just, it just happens. But sometimes I have to see bad movies because it's kind of what I do on the channel. King Arthur, the Sword isn't just a bad movie. It's a disappointing movie. It's because it, the trailers looked cool. Granted, it looked kind of guy rich, and they had Zeppelin playing. Like, baby, baby, baby. She had Zeppelin. It was a cool trailer, man. And what do we got? We got Guy Ritchie doing Guy Ritchie in King Arthur, and it did not work. I am sorry. This movie, this movie was boring. The movie was boring. It was. It dragged unnecessarily. It didn't explain sh crap half the time. Um, we were we were led to try. I mean, all the actors are fine. We got a uh, D. Uh, Jaimon Hansu's in there. Um, Littlefinger from I can't remember his name, but Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. Uh, Charlie Hunnam's in there. Uh, he plays King Arthur. Jude Law's bad guy was didn't make a lot of sense. And he goes in that whole weird demon death Spartan thing at the end. I I don't know. They, they explain nothing about what Excalibur really does. It's just magic. Uh, and the movie cost $175 million. That still boggles my mind. Watch that movie again and watch it compared to some other movies uh, in terms of effects and everything like that. Was it was it because of the – was it the paychecks they were dishing out that I had to make that, that I had to cost that much? Because that movie, when you look at it at – maximum maybe a hundred million dollars at maximum but because of that not only is it one of the worst movies it was one of the biggest bombs this year it's seriously it was it was a it was bad <laughs> more i think about it, the more i'm like it was bad now there's some good things in it like again the actors are fine like when it's doing like actual guy richieisms like you know just explaining a scenario how it went down almost like a, a caper kind of thing that's kind of cool some of the action sequences are all right the effects work is passable it's all it's okay but all right it was just a bored and dull and it just did not be need to be 175 million so again it was just more of a disappointment but it does make the worst list uh so that's number 10 number nine rings it's a bad horror movie there's really not it, there was it didn't need to be made i don't think anyone was asking for it it didn't do terrible but didn't do overly well at the box office really the only redeeming factor of the movie was vincent d'onofrio as like the caretaker and spoilers not that i think anyone cares turns out samara's father of a failed priest who blinded himself so samara couldn't like hurt him at all and then she turns all g she goes jesus see the end here's the blind just so you can kill him um but yeah, it's like okay so there's a movie there's a video in the video what and she's going to possess someone to be reborn, rebirth, even though that means nothing at the end. So she, she possesses the girl at the end, or the girl has become Samara, or what? Because she, like, wipes, she's in the shower, and she spits out some hair, which is a, a trademark of Samara, and nothing made sense. And then you got, um, well, not Sheldon, um... Uh, oh, the, 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 um, the one who was dating Kaylee Kukulo's character from Big Bang Theory. He's the guy who finds the tape and does this chain letter event and does this, like, club around the tape. Like, and me and Mark commented about this in the video. He's like, you're a professor at a college. You do not have the clout to what, seal off an entire floor of a building. <laughs> you don't. You don't. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it was, but it, that's the thing. We weren't even expecting it to be good. It was just a bad movie, but it was a bad movie. I at least got some enjoyment. 
Um, I got more enjoyment out of King Arthur than I did with Rings. I, again, Vincent D'Onofrio was really the only good thing about the movie, and he wasn't even in it that long. So, number nine is Rings. Uh, number eight is Resident Evil Final Chapter. Now, give me one second, because I got my computer out here, so I'm going to get the guy's name up. Now, I just mentioned that the only, re uh, only redeemable thing about Rings, uh... Resident Evil 7, I believe that was it. No, but... What, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's the game. After, uh, final chapter. There we go, final chapter. Um, I just mentioned that in Rings, the only good thing about it was Vincent D'Onofrio. Literally. Literally the only good thing... Did I get the right one here? It says 2016. Uh... Maybe I did get the right one. Did that come out in 2000? Did it come out last year? Uh, Neela Jolovich, Claire, Wesker. Uh, did I maybe make a mistake here? I think I made a mistake here. Uh, maybe this came out last, the, the previous year. No, wait, now I'm getting 2017. Why is IADB saying this is 2016? I. Wait, now it's saying, yeah, I've got 2017 here. What is going on here? I know I saw it this year. Give me one second here. This this is, what? Oh. It got released overseas in 2016. And Japan and Tokyo. Everywhere else was 2000. All right. Okay, I am right. All right. That's stupid. I hate, I, that's stupid. But as I was saying, the only, uh, the only redeemable quality to this movie was Ian Glenn as Dr. Alexander Isaac and, a cl and his clones. You want to talk about some of the best over-the-top acting you're going to see in a bad movie in, in recent in recent years. You talk, you go with that. He is just having so much fun being just comic book villain, and I mean bad comic book villain, evil. Just, I'm evil. So can I have some water? He just has his cans up. His abs are like, thank you. <laughs> you just have so much. I like, I, anytime he's on, on him, like, I'm having fun with this. Everything else in the movie was a complete bore. There was, like, maybe a jump scare that I didn't see coming. I'm like, damn it, jump scare. I hate jump scares. Not because they're scared, because literally I'm like, they don't scare me. They just give that... Oh, yeah, okay. Physically, his response of scaring is, you know, it startled me. Like, sure, it startled me. But I'm like, that's not scary. That's just loud and annoying, and that's why it makes me jump. Um, And, then, I mean, but in the shaky... Oh, my God. You want to talk about some of the worst shaky can ever. I mean, and then you get that trail say, I want to go ch -ch -ch, editing the, you know, the Paradise City. God, you, you just, the acting is just not very interesting. You know, they kill a bunch of characters for no real reason. They're just cannon fodder. They kill Ruby Rose. So I'm like, okay, killed Ruby Rose, who really had a very big year this year, all things considered. Um... I mean, she was in John Wick Chapter 2, she was in Resident Evil, she was in uh, Pitch Perfect 3, so, yeah, good for Ruby Rose. But, I mean, you uh, just, the you know, effects-wise, it's not very good, it's not, not a good time at all. So, yeah, Resident Evil Final Chapter made it to the number 8 spot. Number six, 7, Cars 3. Now, Cars 3 is on the worst of your list, but it's this low because when you break it down... Yeah, it's a bad movie. Yeah, it's the, the morals are stupid. Well, the morals are not. Yeah, no, the premise, the morals you're trying to learn in this are kind of stupid. Um, they're they're, they're it's like, hey, I want to be, a, I want to still race. Hey, I'm gonna give it up for your dreams to race. But at the same time, it's just a, it's a kids film. I wasn't really expect. That's the thing. I wasn't even going into this with high expectations, so it kind of met those expectations. I'm like, it's passable for young kids i definitely don't mean said argument don't get me wrong i if i had young kids i'd show them better movies than cars 3. i wouldn't show them cars 3 but if you're gonna show them cars 3 it's not gonna hurt them at all they're not uh they're not gonna suffer for it so it's it i mean it, it's just bad it was bad i can't i can't think of really any joke i was like enjoying in fact there was jokes i'm just like painfully just uh and, oh, God, please tell me it's, uh, Providence, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Cars 3 makes it a number seven. Now, why is it worse than Resident Evil or Rings or King Arthur? Again, I, I think King Arthur, out of all these, was the one that... You know, I'm saying this out loud now, and I realize that's not true. But I'll get to why. I'll get to why. King Arthur, I think, was the least of the bad, simply because overall it was more just boring than bad. I mean, it wasn't good, but it was more boring than bad. Rings was just bad. Resident Evil was really bad. Cars 3 was really bad, but it's just... I, I think it's just because I went in expecting it to be bad, and yeah, it was bad, so... I don't know. I, I maybe I could maybe I could have bumped it up a bit, but no. Cars three comes in at number seven. Number six, Free Fire with Chartel Coppola, um, Army Hammer, uh, oh, uh, still Killian Murphy. So Free Fire is one that when we saw the trailers, this is another talk, this is another one talking about disappointing movies. Is that when we saw it, we're like, okay, yeah, this movie kind of looks cool. Me and Powers the Bee and Marco and we're like, yeah. Okay, it's got kind of it's got that nice '70s vibe to it and all that. As we're watching the movie, we're just like, "This is kind of unpleasant." And they we're watching a character talk about how he broke a girl's teeth in, and you know, because she wouldn't suck his cock, and it's like, "What?" Uh, okay, and this guy's like a is like a freaking um, uh, is a speed fiend, and like, um, okay, and it's just getting ugly, and just the violence, and the see shots of Kobe get, like, burned, and all the, okay, and the guy get run over, like, this is, this is really unpleasant to watch, I'm, I'm like, we're not really enjoying this very much, I mean, the only real saving grace in this was Army Hammer, I mean, not like Brie Larson's bad or anything in the movie, in fact, most of the actors aren't bad, but Army Hammer's the only character you really like, because he's kind of just got this nice swagger about it, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's like, ah, oh, and you see him constantly just lighting a cigarette the whole time. It's like, hey, okay, so you want a good John Denver story? And then he gets shot in there. We're like, no! It's like, you killed the only good character. And that's, I think, why it gets so low on the list at number six. Not in the top five, but it's at number six that it's just an ugly movie. It is not a pleasant movie to watch. Not, not in terms of, like, visual, just in terms of tone. It's an ugly movie. Uh, and it, it, it just wasn't very pleasant. It also didn't do well, so... Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best. So yeah, just to recap, number ten was King Arthur: Legend of the Sword. Number nine was Rings. Number eight was Resident Evil: uh, Final Chapter. Number seven was Cars Three. Number six is Free Fire. Now we're in the top five. And then the top five. Now this one, thinking on it, maybe I could have bumped a little higher on the list in terms of not as bad as it actually is placing. But in terms of historical revel relevance, I and what they did in the movie to that. I had to put it about the halfway mark, or just in the top five. And number five is Birth of the Dragon. Now, honestly, some of the good in this movie is pretty good. Like, the action sequences, the choreography, is fantastic. The guy playing Bruce Lee is great. Um, uh, their, his relationship and rivalry with Wayne Jackman is pretty solid. However, what, and, and Cinema Snob, if you ever watch Brad Jones, uh, Brad Jones uh, made a very good point about this, is that it's not, it's mostly not about them. It's about his student and, you know, his struggles and falling in love with this girl at a, in a, in a, in a kind of like a yak, Yakuza house. Um, or Triad house, sorry. Well, Triad Yakuza, more or less the same thing. Point being is like that, and it's like, it's falling to him like 60% of the movie. Like, what? Um, I'm, wor I'm here for Bruce Lee playing Wing Jack Mon. Thank you very much. Wing, Wing Jackman very much. And yeah, and when they go at it, it's a great fight until you realize, like, as far as everything I've heard about that fight, this is not how this fight went down. They did not pretty much tie. Wayne Jackman didn't pretty much kind of beat him, teach him a lesson, and then lost in the long term. No, Bruce Lee more or less kicked his ass, from what I understand. And from everything I've heard, yeah, no, he, Bruce Lee won that fight pretty decisively. Uh, so, right there, you're spitting in the history, or you're spitting in the face of history. And I heard Wayne Jackman had a little hand in this, actually working on this movie, too, because he's still alive. So, I'm wondering if it's, you know, his ego? And again, maybe I'm wrong, maybe, maybe everything we've heard about that fight is wrong. Maybe this is really kind of how it went down to some degree. But as far as I know... That's not how that went down. 
So you have that, and then you have them storming the Triads restaurant to, you know, save all the women. And just, it would make for a fun Bruce Lee, expo or Bruce Lee movie. Like, he teams up with a oh, Grandmaster or something like that, and, you know, he goes to save the day. Make for a cool movie, but, like, a movie Bruce Lee would have made. But as a movie about Bruce Lee and about the events that actually happened, <laughs> this movie was not good. This movie was a bit of an insult in history. Or a spit in the face in history. So that's number five. Number four. Baywatch. Look, I didn't have the highest host, but I like The Rock, and I like Zac Efron. But man, when this... Uh, there were occasional jokes where I laughed. Uh, there's never... There was never... There's almost never a comedy that I go see that I, uh, that I never... Com almost never laugh at. There's been a couple, but it's it's rare. Baywatch wasn't one of those. Baywatch, I still got some laughs. And that's mostly because of Zac Efron and... Uh, Dwayne DeRock Johnson. They are trying their damnedest in this movie to make this make this movie, you know, work to make it relevant, to make it funny. But man, it's no, there's there's maybe a handful of jokes that worked, and then you're dealing with about a, I think like I think it's a little over an hour and a half, dealing with maybe an hour and twenty minutes. Like let's say if it, let's say just for sake of sake the movie was two hours long, maybe fifteen minutes of those jokes work. And the rest do not. Now, luckily, the Rock's charisma can it saves it from being just unwatched, like just a mess, like uh, ugly to watch, like Free Fire was. And Zac Efron works really well off the Rock, actually. However, it, it's not enough to save the movie from being number four in terms of bad. This movie was just bad. There's a scene, spoilers if you haven't seen Baywatch with the Rock. Where they're going into, they're breaking into an, a, a, a morgue to uh, find some medical records to do an autopsy, and they got the they got the corpse of a guy who was killed. Like, oh, look at his, look at his balls. It's like no, you can see maybe hair nails in his uh, hair marks in his balls, and you see this prosthetic dick, and you, you see well, it's, I mean, it's supposed to look real, and it does, and you see Zach Efron just like yeah, and then Eater Rock's taking a picture. It's like how is this funny? This isn't funny. This is gross and just ah uh. and then i i talked about it in my review you can look at my review more for this but i listened to their explanations about it uh, they give explanations like grifters you know they're 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 beats these what do we do about that or you know what if a manta ray uh when a swarm of manta rays are coming through and uh you got you call animal control not enough time uh or what if you know smuggling diamonds through surfboards or something like that which i think was the actual plot one of the baywatch episodes and on, on all those i'm like okay look the grifters thing, the sand thieves, the beast thieves, I can actually understand you getting involved in that. Makes sense. The manta rays, first off, manta rays don't have stingers, but whatever. I don't really, maybe, but that one's a stretch. But no, I'm sorry, you have no legal, you have no legal ability to go and say, hey, you stop smuggling diamonds, we're Baywatch. No, you got no authority to do that. Uh, so it's just, uh, I don't know. It it was it's it's a bad movie. It is bad, but it's only number four. Number three, and this is where it's gonna piss people off, folks. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I said it. Come on, who wants a piece right now? I need, come on, take it. I'll take all your criticism right now. Blade Runner twenty forty nine sucked. It sucked. I am sorry. Look, I love the original Blade Runner like a lot of people do. Not everyone does. That's cool. And in front of it, a lot of people really enjoyed this movie. Me, Mark, and the powers that be. No. No. For, okay, this movie is way too... Two hours and 49 minutes. No. This movie... You need to shave at least a half hour down off this movie. This movie was dull. It was dragging. It didn't have a... Here's the thing. The original Blade Runner had a personality to it. You could feel the personality in there. And for the first, maybe, the first scene's good. Don't get me wrong. The first scene's good. The scene with Ryan Gosling and Decker's good. Like, when they first meet and that whole kind of action sequence and their interactions, that's good. Harrison Ford is good in the movie. That is, I mean, it, I mean, it looks good, but that is it. There is, like, no, I mean, there's a plot, obviously. Like, it, it, Ryan Gosling... No, like, as a replicant that everyone knows is replicant working, that's that's a slightly different point. But Ryan Gosling, and I like Ryan Gosling, he has no personality in the story whatsoever. Decker had a personality. Ali we had in the original one had a personality. 
Ryan Gosling has no personality whatsoever in this movie, except for a few moments where he kind of rages out and stuff. That's about, that is about it. I cared more about his AI, his AI girlfriend, than him. I, and then, again, the movie just is long and boring. There are, there are like, there's like three minute moments, moments of like between a minute to like three, maybe even five minutes. Where absolutely nothing is happening and he's just walking. And I know, get it, it's trying to build suspense, but it's trying to build up the moment. But the original Blade Runner did that quicker. I mean, there were moments, sure, that dragged a bit, but it didn't feel like it was dragging. It felt like it was building something. And this, it builds to something, but the amount of time you have to build that. Look, here's the pressure. Here, here's the fuse. Like, there's your time to build up to it. And then that's the amount of time you usually need. That's the time you needed but instead, you do this. No, you were good. You're good up to here. But no, you're taking way too long. And Jared Leto, what the hell was he doing? Just I'm I'm doing my Nick Cage impression. You don't know not you do not know what pain is yet. You will learn. Seriously, it sounded like he was doing Nick Cage. <laughs> and then as a female assistant, I have no idea what the deal with her arc was. She's like. She's like his pitman, his biker. Maybe she's kind of try, trying to be attracted to Ryan Gosling or prove she's better than him. And I think at one point she says that near the end when they are having a fight, even though he kicks her ass eventually. Uh, and then he kills the police chief or commissioner. Uh, or, and she's like, I'm going to tell him that you forced me to do it. <laughs> yes, and she's crying while she's doing it. Like, what is going on with you right now? I don't get what's happening right now. <sighs> And then they talk about like a replicate revolution that is never addressed ever again. Maybe they're going to plan for that for a sequel. But guess what? That's not happening. The movie tanked. I mean, just think. The movie's supposed to have made $175 million. Again, visually, I can maybe understand some of that. But overall, $175 million. No. The movie didn't need to be that goddamn expensive. At best, a hundred million, and then maybe, honestly, you could have salvaged least some of that budget. I mean, if it had about a fifty million dollar marketing budget, maybe a hundred million dollars, it would have bond, but it would have been a much bigger, uh, much less of a loss. So, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, yeah, a lot of people like it. Like it, I can understand it to a degree. Absolutely, I can. But you know, I'm, mean, I'm not one of them. I don't want a number three. And that she's, oh, bad, bad, but still not the worst. Top two, folks. Number two, Transformers Last Night. Look. They still look nice. Anthony Hopkins is delightfully, stupidly, quirkily fun. The first, the opening scene in A Medieval Times is actually kind of all right. Um, Stanley Tucci's Mer Merlin is a little iffy, but... He, but they 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 do kind of like you know Merlin's a charlatan. He's just been using like uh like tech and stuff to make his magic, and his staff was actually alien tech and all that. Take that out of the frame. I mean, they don't use the Dinobots at all. Again, apparently there's a little Dinobot baby, so I guess they banged. I don't know. <laughs> do do Transformers actually have inter have sexual relations with each other? Unicron. They, oh, let's not even get started on Unicron. But I mean, it's just it's the same crap. Over and over and over again. But you know what? Finally, people have kind of wised up on that. Because this did the worst out of every Transformers movie to date. So, there's hope for humanity. Maybe Bumblebee will be better. It's got not. It's not directed by Michael Bay. So, maybe it will be better. Who knows? But yeah. Transformers last night. I mean, there's not much else I can say on that. So, just to recap real quick. Number 10, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Number 9, Rings. Number 8, Resident Evil, Final Chapter. Number 7, Cars 3. Number 6, Free Fire. Number 5, Birth of the Dragon. Number 4, Baywatch. Number 3, Blade Runner 2049. Number 2, Transformers Last Night. And then number 1, you knew it had to be this one. Because uh, there's really no other movie I've seen this year that could not be. Fifty Shades Darker. Now, the first Fifty Shades of Grey movie, I'm actually in the boat with a lot of people who say this. Oh, well, a lot of people say this. A lot of people I hear say this. Um, it's bad. Not that bad. It's it's just it's, it's kind of like just a standard bad movie. It's almost like it's the source material that's kind of elevates it to being thought of as just amazingly bad. It's just a bad movie. Fifty Shades Darker, on the other hand, 
Wow, this took it to a whole new level. Like this, this, this took it to, this took it to, what the fuck are you doing levels? It's like, you may have taught me how to fuck, but she taught me how to love. Like, did you, is this a blood in the book? Does this really exist in the book? Is this a thing that's happening right now? Uh, I, 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 I can't, it's like, and again, for a book that's supposed to be really raunchy, really racy, all that. This is some tame shit they're doing. This this is boring <laughs> to just uh, Kim Basinger apparently needs work. Uh, I'm you know I like to believe and then they got the ex boss who's obsessed with her who's still obsessed with her. It's like hello Anna, I'm obsessed with you. I don't know why I'm obsessed with you. Like seriously, why is everyone obsessed with this woman? There's no she's honestly there's nothing special about her. There's nothing unique about her to say, I need you in my life. I, I, I just, what the, I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't, I do not get it. I just, I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. And of course, you know, uh, Christian Grey is no better than he was in the first one. And Anastasia Steele, because that's a real name, not a porn name. Um, yeah, and so much for making this 20 minutes. Uh, I mean, just, just uh, I, I don't, I don't get it. I just, it, uh, th this is, and then we got Fifty Shades Free coming out this year, and it's the last one, hopefully. And the, yeah, the box office for these, by the way, has taken a bit of a nose. The only one, the first, the last one, still made money, but um, the, here's the where the first one was. This is where the last one ended up. Hopefully, the next one will end up here. So I, I don't know. I, they, they, they made money. They got a fan base. I just. Uh, just, it's bad, 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 just bad. <sighs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That's my top 10 list. Again, one more time. Uh, we got King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, number 10. Number 9, Rings. Number 8, Resident Evil. Number th 7, Cars 3. Number 6, Free Fire. Birth of the Dragon came in number 5. 4 was Baywatch. 3, Blade Runner 2049. Eee. Uh, Transformers 5 made it to number 2, and Fifty Shades Darker made it at the number 1 spot. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the uh, comments below. Let us know we'll get to it at some point. I'll be back a little bit with the uh, top 10 best uh, videos of, or uh, videos, best movies of 2017. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.